All right, how's that? Is that a little bit better? Cool. All right, so what was I talking about? All right, yeah, myself. All right, so I'm the owner of Hyperion Gray. Uh, we're an open source development shop. We're completely focused on the nexus between uh, distributed computing and um, offensive security, basically. So I'm the guy that built Punk Spider. How many of you have heard of Punk Spider already and used it, maybe? Okay, cool. So you'll be learning a lot of new stuff in this talk for, for those of you that haven't uh, seen it at all. So I've also been in love with distributed computing since college. Um, I studied physics and math and did a lot of like computational physics kind of stuff. So distributed computing is, is just something I'm you know, really a fan of. And we'll be talking a lot more about that here in just a minute. So. We're just going to do it like this if it doesn't work out. All right. So anyway. So a little bit of background uh, on this talk and what, what I'm going to be talking to you about, actually. So I've presented on a couple different techniques at uh, ShmooCon and DEF CON this year. I, I haven't really had the chance to kind of put it all together for you all. Um, sort of like, a, you know, why should I care about this or how can I actually leverage these tools myself? So I talked a lot about different techniques, but not so much that would stuff that would help you all out. Uh, you gotta be kidding me. Are you uh, Yes. Turn mirroring off. How many of you are Windows users? Anybody? Yeah. <laughs> there might be an option to the desktop. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's try that again. What the hell was I talking about? So the goal of this talk is to give you an idea of how a large-scale attack on a significant portion of a country's web infrastructure uh, could be carried out. So some of the tools that I'm going to show you are uh, open source. Every time I hear that noise, I'm like, shit. Oh, really? OK, so it's not just me. Promise? No. <laughs> All right, so what was I talking about? Right, so I'm going to show you how to conduct a, a huge attack on a significant portion of a country's infrastructure, basically. 
Uh, sort of star of the show and what we're going to spend most of our time talking about is a distributed version of SQL map. How many of you are familiar with SQL map? Okay, cool. So, so for those of you that aren't, it's an automatic database takeover stealing kind of thing. Uh, it's got a lot of really good options and we basically created a version that works over a Hadoop cluster um, and lets you break into a whole lot of stuff all at once really, really quickly. So I'll be showing you that here in just a minute. It's pretty cool. All right, so what's our goal here, right? So like I mentioned, our goal is to run a massive scale kind of smash and grab attack, right? So by massive scale, I do mean something that is large, something like a large portion of the web applications of an entire country. So we're not just talking about a few thousand web apps here. We're talking about what could potentially be millions of targets. So we also don't want the, um, we don't want the attack to take too long, right? So the longer that you let an attack run, the more chance there is that somebody's just going to bust in your house and arrest you. Um, or that you know your ISP is going to shut you down, or, or or that something's actually you know going to go wrong there. So it, it's a pretty simple goal, right? But it, it's by no means easy. So there's a ton of problems that you just kind of end up running into right from the very beginning. Oh, <laughs> everything good? We're good. We're good. Okay. There's a ton of problems that you run into uh, just from the very start. So how are you going to get these targets? Like how are you actually going to identify what these targets are? How are you going to collect them and, and put them in even, even just something as simple as like a really big list, right? How do you actually do that? Um, how can we automatically own these targets once we do have them? How can we actually check them for uh, something like, I'll be using the example of SQL injection. Um, how can you actually check them for SQL injection in a reasonable amount of time and then automatically exploit that? That's something that's, that's not trivial, right? This is an attack that could potentially take, you know, years to, to complete. So. Um, and then, you know, how can we own them with that just as quickly as possible? How do we make it so that we're kind of, you know, in and out, right? You don't like, like break into a liquor store and like start stealing shit and then like fall asleep on their floor, right? You, you grab everything and you run, from what I understand. I've never actually done that. Try. <laughs> so, everybody still with me? Everybody awake? Everything cool? All right, good. So, as I've already briefly mentioned, with a large-scale uh, attack like this, it, there's a real possibility of, you know, basically getting your internet shut down, right? Your ISP could shut you down. Uh, this is stuff that's pretty obvious and easy to detect. Um, even just like while testing a lot of this stuff, uh, I had some issues with Amazon, um, who apparently don't like, like really suspicious traffic running through their network, so who knew, right? So. There's really not a whole lot here that we can do to stay stealthy um, the the entire time, I should say. So our goal is going to be basically to stay stealthy as long as possible until the very end of the attack where we're actually smashing things, right? And I'll be showing you exactly how, how we're going to do that when we get into the attack. So in terms of actually decreasing like the time required for the attack, it's, it's pretty infeasible to actually just do this from one machine, right? So even if it's a large machine, um, you're going to need, need a lot more computing power than that. Uh, than just like a single machine. So otherwise, you're going to basically be waiting forever. As I mentioned, you know, you got more chances of being shut down, being arrested, something going wrong with the attack. Um, but then you run into the problem of, well, if I just add more machines and then start doing more stuff from those machines, um, it, it gets a little bit complicated, right? So maybe you have several daemons running uh, on several different machines, each one doing different pieces of the attack. Uh, I mean, how do you actually coordinate those, right? You can. I don't know, SSH to each of them and run something in the background and just let it keep running, but uh, you start running into issues, right? How do you know that something actually got finished properly? How do you know that um, something hasn't gone wrong there? How do you, how do you actually get, the re get that information back, right? You end up having to transfer a bunch of information around it. It becomes a little bit of a pain in the ass. You know, you can hack out some solutions, but we want something that's, you know, a little bit more ideal for this. So how do we actually overcome this is going to be a, a big question that, that we're going to so using a lot of the techniques that I've presented on in the past, it turns out that uh, distributed computing is actually a really great solution to, to a lot of our problems. So just to be clear, by distributed computing, I mean using like well-established um, parallel computing techniques and platforms to coordinate between all of our assets. Now, we obviously don't want to have to implement all of that stuff ourselves, right? This is stuff that you know, research is being done in, it's, it's complex techniques, complex platforms that can be built out of this. So we don't want to actually get into um, writing a lot of the distributed code ourselves, right? We want something that makes it easy on us, uh, allows us to write quick, you know, quick jobs, quick things, 
um, that, that take advantage of all the computing power that we have. So what we're basically going to do is we're going to abuse big data technology, right? Um, most notably, we're going to be talking about how to use a lot of this stuff over on Apache Hadoop cluster. There's lots of different uh, distributed computing platforms. Apache Hadoop is, is an open source one that's easy, so easy to set up, works really well on like old ass hardware. Um, so you don't actually have to spend a lot of money on it. Uh, it's also really well respected. A lot of places use it. So if you go to something like Amazon Cloud, um, they have ways to actually stand up a Hadoop cluster like really, really quickly. So that's pretty cool too. All right. So just to give you an idea of how much stuff you can actually break into using this technique, um, we've seen the, the really, really horrible state of uh, web application security in, in the Punk Spider project. Um, I know I've mentioned it before, but basically it's uh, the Punk Spider project is a massive repository of uh, web app vulnerabilities that are out there in the wild. Uh, we built a distributed, yeah, I guess a distributed uh, web app fuzzer. We just kind of unleashed it on the internet. Um, added a bunch of machines to, to our Hadoop cluster, uh, supplemented that with a bunch of cloud machines as well, uh, and basically just doing a huge scan of the internet. And we've scanned about like, I think like 2.8, 2.9 million uh, domains right now. So what we've seen is that, I mean, you're really just, there's so many ridiculously obvious bugs like by just complete dumbass developers. Um, where if you start, you know, attempting automated SQL injection against uh, the, these web apps, like it, you're obviously going to get in. You're going to basically just steal the entire database. You can do whatever you want with it, honestly. Uh, so we've actually seen all of that. Um, I don't remember what it's up to, but in terms of just SQL injection bugs, uh, I believe we're up to something like it's close to a hundred thousand. So. Definitely check that out. That's punkspider.hyperiongray.com, by the way, if, if anybody wants to check it out. Um, but the short of it is, a big problem that you're going to run into uh, after you perform an attack like this is actually dealing with all the data that you get back. I mean, you're going to just steal so much shit that you're not going to know what to do with it, which is pretty cool. And we're not actually going to get into how to deal with that. We're actually just interested here in like how do you, how do you break all that shit? How do you do all this? So I've already mentioned a couple of these, but here's a few reasons to use uh, distributed attacks in general. Uh, we can shorten the time required to attack massive targets, uh, decrease the amount of time uh, we can be shut down, and overall just help us with coordination of our assets. And again, Apache Hadoop is going to be our uh, platform of choice. And this slide just kind of elaborates on that. Um, basically, yeah, we're going to add coordination to our computing resources. Um, again, if you don't have this set up properly, uh, or if you try to hack something out, you might end up duplicating a lot of effort. Your attack might be less effective, uh, and you just start running into a bunch of, bunch of problems there. So yeah, that's enough of that. Let's just keep moving. So high-level steps to actually getting this attack done. Uh, and I'm going to get you know, really specific into how, how I would actually solve the problem of conducting like, a really huge attack like this. So um, here's the steps that we're going to follow, basically. So, First step, obviously, is, is to get our distributed computing cluster up and running. Uh, in this example, I use Apache Hadoop just because it's, it's well-respected, well-documented, the community is really nice behind it. Um, it's really not hard, and I'll give you guys some links to that. I do kind of gloss over this part just because it's, it's not that interesting to talk about, but it's actually really easy to set up. If you know how to use uh, Linux command prompt, basically, you can be up and running within like just a few hours, so it's really not hard. So first step after that's going to be to build a repository of targets, right? So in your classic pen test scenario, usually that isn't that big of a deal. I mean, e even if uh, you're on the kind of pen tests where they're like, hey, you know, discover everything. Just just go. Just pen test us. Uh, e even when you run into a scenario like that, like, you, you know, you do a little Google hacking. Um, some cases you're even just given the targets so you don't have to deal with it. But in this case, this is something that is non-trivial, right? So we're trying to discover just a ton of web applications in this case. Uh, so that's something that we're going to be talking about. Um, next step is going to be to do uh, a little bit of validation of the targets uh, and dump the, dump the results of what we found to, the, uh, uh, to a file, uh, basically just a dumb list of uh, URLs that you're going to want to hit. And this is just a little uh, subtle note on, on how Hadoop works, but uh, we'll, we'll get into all that in more detail. So third step. 
So third step is the one that we're going to be spending the most time on uh, when we actually get to it. So this is kind of the smash and grab step where we steal all the databases, which you might notice is the uh, title of this talk. So we'll be talking about that a lot. We'll, we'll spend actually most of our time on that. So by the way, if anybody has any questions throughout like any of this, just feel free to stop me. I mean, it, it's, it's a small room, you know, not that many people. So um, definitely just stop me uh, if I'm not making something clear. So anyway, all right. So just to be clear, I'm actually going to go through all of these st attack steps. Uh, I have a couple demos I'm going to show you, a couple video demos, I should say. So I'm actually doing, I actually did do this attack uh, for this presentation, except for the step where, ex where you're actually exploiting the targets, right? So I'm not doing anything horribly illegal. Um, so just wanted to be clear on that. Uh, <laughs> So right before I actually exploit these targets, uh, I did want to show you how the distributed version of SQL map works. By the way, it's, it's called Mr. Injector. I don't know if I've mentioned that yet, but I probably should have. Um, so I actually want to show you Mr. Injector working against targets. Uh, so I actually just switched over to a test bed of targets. We set up about 100 web apps um, that were like really vulnerable to SQL injection, just like you'd see in something like Punk Spider. And we actually ran it against it, uh, and we ran some, some timing tests, basically. Um, and I'm going to show you that. Uh, so yeah, just to be clear, just so I don't get arrested, I had to mention that. All right, so let's actually get started with, with uh, how I did this. So the first thing you have to do is uh, pick a target, right? So let's go ahead and hit a significant portion of the sites that are owned by the UK. Uh, by that I mean just really generally, either sites that are owned by the government, commercial organizations, uh, you know, even things like users in the UK. Really no big reason why I'm choosing this, right? Uh, I mean, we all love the UK. I like, you know, Faulty Towers, Monty Python, IT Crowd, more things over there that I'm sure they have. Um, but they have a, a really large set of websites that we can work with, right? And they're in English, which, which makes things a little bit easier on us. Um, when you start dealing with uh, foreign language websites like, uh, you know, Japanese, Chinese, that kind of thing, uh, you start running into things like encoding issues and you just have to be a little bit more careful on, on how you code things. Are there any web app developers out there, by the way? Yeah. So encoding issues are horrible. They're, they're not that fun to deal with. Um, you start running into things like, you know, libraries that don't support Unicode well and just, just horrible things. But, uh, so we don't want to deal with that. We're just going to kind of ignore that. Um, I'll say that, you know, it is a solvable problem. Uh, it's just a little bit of a pain in the ass, and I don't want to talk about it too much. I've already said too much. Anyway, so I'm going to take a, a little bit of a naive approach, uh, and we're going to consider anything with a .uk extension in the URL as being a UK-owned site. Um, yeah, we're going to get some, some sites in there that, that possibly we don't want. Um, maybe wouldn't be within scope if you were doing a pen test, but you're already doing something that's like illegal as shit. So if you're really worried about that, I mean, come on, right? It's really not that big a deal. So there's definitely some more sophisticated techniques that you could use if you actually did want to solve this problem. Um, you know, you could use things like, uh, you know, do some IP lookups and do like an IP to country database lookup, things like that. Uh, you could even do some techniques in machine learning, which I know uh, very little about, but I just added in there because I thought it sounded cool. Um, but we really just want to get to the point where we have enough sites that uh, we could do some uh, significant damage um, and just steal a bunch of shit. So we cool. All right. So as I mentioned, first step is going to be to build a Hadoop cluster. Uh, it's surprisingly easy to do for those of you that have never done it. Done it. Um, how many of you have used Hadoop, by the way? Okay. Cool. Oh, very cool. So it's surprisingly easy, right? Um, it's not complicated. It's really well documented. If you have any questions, the uh, Apache Hadoop community is, uh, they're just, they're awesome. Like, they'll get back to you within like an hour, usually, um, with any questions that you have, and, the, and they'll, you know, solve any issues for you. So it's really cool. Uh, you can, you can also use commodity hardware when you're building a Hadoop cluster. You don't really have to, um, have to worry about your machines actually being reliable which is really nice. Uh, my first Hadoop cluster was just like this like really stupid looking thing in my apartment. It was just like like machines like piled on top of each other um, on like shelves and things like that. Um, I remember it was the, the only hard part of it was like 
finding space in my apartment for it. So I had, I had like machines like behind my television and like shit like that. So it was really crazy. Um, anyway, I refer you to these links for details uh, on setting up a cluster. It'll get you, you know, from, from nothing to Hadoop cluster really, really quickly. Uh, it assumes absolutely no knowledge of Hadoop. Uh, this will, this is for uh, Ubuntu in particular. Um, and I'll probably also do some kind of a blog post. I'll give you the URL for that uh, at the very end. So first interesting step uh, is going to be to build a repository of targets, right, as I mentioned. So there's a few different ways you can do this. Um, you can scrape Google results, but I haven't really found a simple and reliable way to do that. Um, if anybody, you know, does know of a really good way to do that, you can stop me and, and, and I don't know, call me an idiot, berate me or something. But um, I haven't really found a, an awesome way to do that, that that will actually work like every time. So. Uh, Google definitely has some protection around that, right? They don't want somebody just, you know, taking their entire database. So uh, I'm sure there's ways you could get around it. I'm sure there's some stuff you could do, but uh, I chose to go a completely different route on discovering targets. So the way I chose to do it is uh, to leverage our Hadoop cluster, uh, which we've already built. We already have it, so we might as well use it, right? And actually crawl for those targets ourselves. Um, there's uh, an Apache project called Apache Nutch. It's actually the project that Hadoop came from. Um, it happens to be an open source distributed crawler that just works straight out of the box on, an, on, a, on a Hadoop cluster. So it's really perfect for what we're trying to do here. Um, yeah, it's really perfect. So we start off by building a seed list. Um, for this, Google actually is going to come in handy. Um, all I did to, to build a seed list, uh, which if you're not familiar with seed lists, all it is is it's an initial list of uh, URLs that you're going to use to discover more URLs. And then from the ones that you discover, you discover even more. And then you just kind of keep going incrementally like that. Um, so we start out just by, by building really simply a seed list. Uh, usually a few thousand uh, URLs, websites is, is, is fine. Um, I use a Firefox add-on called SEO Quake, which basically just lets you export Google results to CSV. Um, now, of course, you know you have to export it like page by page. You can't just like export it in, in one big um, one big dump, which would be cool. Um, so it is a little bit of a pain in the ass. It, it it's uh, it's decent for like you know building a seed list of a few thousand, but you're if you get start getting into the millions and things like that, you're just gonna like drive yourself freaking crazy. Um, we do make sure to add things like government sites, uh, media sites, and, and anything else that uh, might have any kind of uh, impact on the country. So our goal here is to smash and grab uh, as much useful stuff as we want. So we do make sure to add all of those. So that's a, a little picture of my seed list. Um, I actually have no idea why I put this in there because it's completely not interesting. It's it's just a list of URLs, um, but there it is. So you're welcome. All right. So I mentioned Apache Notch, uh, distributed web crawler. Uh, it uses MapReduce, which we'll get into a little bit later. Uh, it crawls our seed lists looking for links, right? So it then uses those links that it found, uh, crawls those as well, and then looks for more links until a certain, what they call depth is reached. Um, it uh, uses Apache Hadoop to do all of this, right? So what that means to you, uh, and actually I'm gonna show you this a little bit later, but what that means to you is that um, you don't have to deal with coordinating anything uh, between your distributed assets. It pretty much does everything for you. You run one single command um, and you get this like really powerful web crawler uh, running for you in, in a completely distributed manner. The more machines you have, the faster it'll go. It's really as simple as that. Uh, so one thing that we are going to do here is we don't want to raise any suspicion just yet, right? So we're not into the smash and grab databases portion of this yet. So we want to make sure that we stay as stealthy as possible, right? Uh, in the end, you know, this this is something that that could be considered somewhat loud, right? I mean, you're you're crawling and creating traffic on a whole bunch of websites um, that are specifically targeted to a certain location. Somebody could put that together. That that could be viewed as, you know, somewhat malicious if, if somebody um, uh, if somebody really good starts noticing that pattern, right? Uh, so in order to uh, you know stay kind of stealthy. Uh, we're going to configure Apache Notch and make it look exactly like a Google Web Spider, right? So basically just going to uh, go all the way down to having the same user agent as a Google Spider. Uh, we're going to respect robots.txt 
and it's going to distribute the job across multiple uh, spidering machines. This is exactly how Google does it. So there's there's absolutely no difference in the way this is going to crawl and and how um, how it's going to look if Google were just crawling it. So we're going to raise you know pretty much no suspicion there. So in the end, we're going to index our results into uh, an Apache Solar backend. So if you're not familiar with Solar, it's uh, just a search engine backend, and we're, we're using it for no particular reason. Uh, all we really need is just some kind of a dumb data store to store uh, a, a bunch of URLs. Uh, only reason I'm choosing Solar is because it's supported by Apache Nutch just straight out of the box. So you can pretty much just you know pass a little command line flag with your Solar URL and uh, dump all the results to Solar without having to worry about it. You don't have to worry about uh, you know doing anything funny, writing any plugins for Apache Nutch or anything like that. All right. How can you actually use Notch? So the first thing you can do is uh, I have a Bitbucket repository. Uh, go and check it out and look for uh, PunkScan. So PunkScan is the is a tool that we're not actually getting into in this talk, uh, but it's our distributed web application vulnerability scanner. Um, only reason I suggest checking this out is because it comes with a pre-configured Apache Notch and Apache Solar. So you don't actually have to deal with configuring almost anything. Um, only thing you really do have to change is if you're trying to look like a Google Web Spider, just go in and change the user agent in the config file, um, and and you're pretty much good to go. I mean, you have Solar, you have Notch, you have means you have your crawler and your repository of targets uh, up and running already. So we're actually going to tell Notch to index only sites with the .uk extension. Um, Notch has this pretty sweet uh, regular expressions based uh, filtering system. So we're just going to include sites that have .uk in their URL. Again, yeah, we're going to get some uh, we're going to get some things that possibly we don't want in there, but we're not going to worry about that too much. So very simply, we start to crawl. It, it really is simple. Um, I think yeah, that, yeah, that command up there is actually the uh, command to run the crawl. Like dead simple. Um, just you know, bin slash notch. You you enter a few parameters, and you're pretty much good to go. So I wanted to show you guys, because um, sometimes it, it becomes a little bit abstract when I start talking about Apache Hadoop, like, well, what does that actually mean for me, right? So I have a Hadoop cluster running, but how does that actually help me? So I wanted to show you just a couple of really quick things in a video. Give me just one second. That's probably it. Okay. So I guess first thing was, uh, if you look at the thing that I'm highlighting right there. Yeah, it's showing up. So if you look at the thing that I'm highlighting right there, that's me uh, configuring it to, to look exactly like a Google spider, right? So we're just changing the user agent. Um, again, this, this is uh, it's already configured to um, respect robots.txt and things like that. So what does it actually mean when I run Nutch over a Hadoop cluster? What does it mean to actually run something over a Hadoop cluster? Uh, really simply, all I've done, uh, this is my master machine, right? Um, and it's ru running what's called a, a MapReduce job. Um, all that basically means for you as, as a user of Hadoop is that I just go to my master machine, enter that one simple command that I showed you before, the bin slash nutch command, um, and everything else happens for me pretty much automatically. It starts running. Uh, what I'm showing you here, I'm scrolling through the different slaves, so you're actually see seeing the HTTP requests um, going through. And this is all just from one command on one node, right? So what I really wanted to get at was you don't have to worry about your, your slave nodes. So Hadoop is set up in that you have a master and then you have a bunch of slave nodes under it. All you have to worry about is running commands on your master node and everything gets distributed automatically. Uh, you can even get down to the point of, um, I could actually go in and reboot one of these machines or just unplug the network cable, anything, um, and the job's going to get distributed to uh, another machine uh, or the portion of the job's going to get distributed to another machine uh, and everything's still going to go, everything's still going to finish properly. Uh, so you don't necessarily need to worry about, well, pretty much anything, right? It, it takes care of, like, everything that could be difficult for you. Sweet. All right. So the next step is pretty simple. Uh, 
we don't even necessarily have to distribute this part, right? Maybe you can just write a quick script for it. But uh, when we have our repository built uh, in Apache Solar, uh, we can do some really simple API calls and just dump all of the URLs in it, right? So uh, we can do some additional validation of these targets. For example, if we want, if we want to be like really careful and uh, you know check and make sure that the pages are actually in the UK, this is where you can actually do something like an IP to country database uh, or something of the like, or, or do some kind of a deeper analysis of it. Um, so if you want to create uh, a distributed tool for this, uh, you can check out my DEF CON talk where I showed you a bit about how to actually create these distributed tools. It's really, really simple. Um, you can do it in like Python or Ruby or, or anything like that um, and just make an kind of instant distributed tool. So in our case, uh, we just kind of want a dumb list and everything we could find and, and we're going to kind of call it a day. So all we need to do is grab these sites, uh, put them in a line separated text file and that's it. All right, so the next step, we're actually getting into the part that I'm going to spend most of the time on. Um, so discovering the targets uh, and crawling and stuff is, is all really cool, right? So, But uh, I wanted to spend most of the time just talking about how we can own as many databases as possible as, as quickly as possible. So I'm going to talk to you about how you can leverage a tool uh, written by Hyperion Gray. This is the distributed version of SQL Map, which is called Mr. Injector. Um, if you went to uh, DEF CON and comma, did anybody catch my talk at DEF CON? Like one guy, sweet. Um, you know, the, just like the completely just dumbass story about why I call it that. Um, for the rest of you, I'm going to leave it at that uh, so that you'll go and watch my DEF CON talk. Um, it's actually really not that that story is not entertaining at all, um, which is really why I'm not repeating it. That, that's probably not a really great pitch to go watch my DEF CON talk, but whatever. <laughs> Check it out anyway. Um, so Mr. Injector is basically a SQL map over a Hadoop cluster, right? So there was a few challenges uh, in coding this up and refining this, but, but overall the concept is actually really simple. So it just distributes SQL map over your cluster automatically, right? So it, it assumes that you have a line separated text file of sites that you want to SQL inject. So if you're still following along with, with the actual attack steps, uh, this is exactly what we got in the previous step. So our test from this, which I'm actually going to show you here in the next slide, uh, so that it can like just greatly, greatly improve uh, the performance of SQL map, even over just a really small cluster. So we're not talking about, uh, um, I'm, the demo I'm going to show you isn't like a massive cluster of like 100 machines or something like that. It was, I think it was like six or seven machines tops. Um, and you're actually going to see that it, it was uh, about 80 times faster than standard SQL map. So when you're hitting millions of targets, that's actually really, really significant. Um, you know, it, your attack could potentially have, you know, taken a year before and then be cut down to something that is actually somewhat reasonable. All right. Before I start this, uh, what you're looking at is uh, Mr. Injector versus a locally scripted SQL map. So on the left hand side, you're going to see SQL map running uh, against a series of targets, just kind of exactly how you'd expect. Um, grab a target, inject it. Uh, I think I think we're stealing database hashes here. Yeah. Stealing database hashes. Uh, and then we move on to the next one, right? So on the right hand side, you're going to see Mr. Injector running over a, a very small Hadoop cluster, as I mentioned. Um, it'll be pretty obvious what you're kind of looking at, but the little red squares that come up represent a target that was owned. So this is actually running on a test bed of 100 websites we built for demo purposes, of course. So this isn't actually hitting all those UK sites or anything like that. Um, so let's see it running. All right, so you see it running, and obviously the, the right-hand side is much, much faster, right? Uh, a big reason that it runs much faster is that uh, first, the, the more, nodes, more nodes are running the job in parallel, right? So, but possibly even more important than that is that uh, Hadoop allows you to configure it so that you're pushing all of your computing resources to their absolute limit. So you don't have to deal with writing a whole bunch of threading code on, on each node. You can actually just tell Hadoop, like, hey, run more stuff on this node, and it'll do it for you automatically without you having to actually code any of that. So it's a really cool system. So that's something like, uh, I think this is like uh, just a little portion of the attack. So it's hitting something like 60 nodes, and it did it in about like 45 seconds. Um, so that's pretty cool when you're talking about something like, like millions of targets that you're potentially going to be hitting, right? So the way it works uh, is through, okay. so the way it works is through uh, MapReduce parallel programming. 
Uh, I'm not going to get uh, really heavily into the details on how to code something like this, uh, but I did do that in my DEF CON talk, so go check that one out. That's, that's two shameless plugs right there. I really need to stop. Um, but the short of it is there's a special function that we wrote called the mapper uh, that's distributed across the cluster automatically. So it runs on each URL, um, and the end result is basically just a bunch of password hashes end up on our local file system uh, when you use Mr. Injector. So some cool stuff about running Mr. Injector, uh, if one node goes down, as I mentioned, uh, it, it gets rerun on a, on a different node, right? So we have very high level of fault tolerance. So it also handles all the threading for us, as I mentioned. All of our resources are being pushed to their absolute limit. Uh, and if you have larger machines, it's just a simple configuration item, um, and you can push those even harder, right? Well, and of course, everything's distributed for you. So all you have to do is, with Mr. Injector, is run a single command on the Hadoop master, and everything is distributed across the entire cluster for you. So you don't have to deal with doing any of that stuff on your own. So that gives us automated distribution, automated fault tolerance, automated completion and failure, failure reporting uh, through Hadoop's web interface, and automated threading. So that's pretty cool. All right, so how do you actually use it, right? So first thing you need, of course, is a Hadoop cluster, as I mentioned. Uh, you download Mr. Injector onto uh, a master Hadoop node. So the only other thing that you're really going to need is a line-separated file with the URLs that you want to test for SQL injection. Uh, not just test for SQL injection, but actually exploit. So then we pretty simply just run it from bash. The usage is, is right up there. It's, it's dead simple. Um, you specify the file with the URLs. You specify the output folder that you want your results to go to. Uh, and then you specify the SQL map arguments that you want to pass in as well. So my favorite part of this is that essentially it is SQL map, right? So uh, everything that SQL map can do, this can do. It just does it in a distributed manner and, and makes your results happen uh, much, much, much faster. Um, yeah, it's completely, you know, you can pass an arbitrary command line argument. So just basically do whatever you want. If you've used SQL map, you're good to go. Yeah. All right, so there's a couple of other useful things beyond SQL map stuff that, that you can do with Mr. Injector. Um, Sometimes SQL map output can include a lot of stuff that, that you might not want. So if you're just injecting a few targets, that's really not that big of a deal. Um, but if you're doing like millions of targets, then that actually becomes a really big deal. Um, the analysis at the end is going to be much, uh, much, much harder. So there's a file called uh, mapper.py in the project root and a function in there called filter. Um, you can basically write your own little Python filter, uh, filter the output line by line or however you'd like, uh, so that you're only getting the output that you want. That's really useful if you're attacking a ton of targets at once again. Um, like uh, in the example attack, I believe I, I wrote a filter that uh, just looked for hashes. So really simple stuff like that um, uh, can save you a lot of time in the end. The other thing you can do is you can run it locally. Um, I show the command up there to actually run it locally. Um, that's really nice because if, if you've ever debugged distributed code, um, it can be like a huge pain in the ass to, to figure out exactly what's going on and what's going wrong. Uh, just makes your life a little bit easier. So more about Mr. Injector. Uh, on a uh, mini Hadoop cluster, uh, by this I mean something like, yeah, seven or eight machines, six, seven machines, something like that, uh, runs about 80 times faster than standard SQL map, uh, assuming you have a significant number of targets here, right? So we have uh, a ton of URLs that we want to hit. Um, that's when you're going to really start seeing the uh, performance increase. Um, yeah, the demo I showed you was uh, an attack of about 100 targets. Uh, it scales really, really well. It, it's a simple concept, right? So the more machines you add to your cluster, the faster it's going to happen. It's really as simple as that. Um, so you can also run it over stuff like Amazon's EMR. Are, are any of you familiar with Amazon EMR? No? A little bit. Uh, Basically, it's, it's, uh, it's an instant Hadoop cluster over, over Amazon. You can, you can make a really big cluster like really click, quick, uh, quickly uh, with a point and click interface, and, and you can run custom jobs like Mr. Injector. Um, you basically say like, all right, give me 300 machines. Uh, I only want them for like an hour. Um, you know, run your stuff and, and then, you know, I don't know, move, move to another, like move somewhere really remote where nobody can find you because you just did something really illegal in this case. But uh, I'll be putting a blog post up on how you can run this over Amazon EMR. Um, really simple concept, really powerful, though. 
So of course, yeah, Mr. Injectors, it's totally free. It's open source. It, it's released under the GPL. So definitely do uh, whatever you want with it. Yeah, so we've stolen a shitload of databases at this point, right? Um, again, that attack was not actually against UK assets, but uh, now it's pretty much time to burn the evidence, right? So my favorite in this is, is definitely the acid option. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that would happen uh, or where I can get acid, but if anybody knows a guy, like just let me know and we'll make that happen. So, but really uh, a good last step would be to, to write some analytics to sift through all of the data that you have basically. So um, again, from Punk Spider, we've seen that this is just gonna be so much data, you're not really gonna know what to do with it. Um, the amount of injectable sites out there is, is really, really high. Um, so definitely check out Punk Spider. Um, if you have a chance. So nobody has ever taken me up on this, uh, but if you want me to pen test your country, uh, let me know. I I'm more than happy to do it. But nobody's... Actually, a dude from... Uh, I, I said that same thing at DEF CON, and a dude from like Estonia or something like that, like some critical infrastructure guy or something like, approached me and he was like, yeah, you know, I'd actually might, might take you up on that. And I got really excited and then he never emailed me back. It was probably just, it was probably just complete bullshit, but uh, yeah. So uh, follow me on Twitter, I'm dot slash punk, or you can follow Hyperion Gray uh, at Hyperion Gray. They'll you know, answer any questions that you have there. Uh, more details on us or on the presentation, www.hyperiongray.com. Uh, as I mentioned, check out Punk Spider, it's punkspider.hyperiongray.com. Uh, check out our blog, hyperiongray.tumblr.com. Um, and uh, we'll be posting, you know, all the tools, uh, any proof of concept stuff uh, from here. All that's just going to be available for free. Um, last thing, uh, thanks to these people. They asked me to only use their first names. Uh, Tomas, Mark, uh, Amanda, uh, SQL Map Project, the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, and, you know, thanks to all of you for coming to my talk. Really appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Uh, I think we have time for questions, right? Uh, yeah, I guess I totally forgot to do that. Um, <laughs> uh, look us up uh, on Bitbucket. I'm uh, A Caceres, A C A C E R E S, or uh, we have a team also called the Punk Spider Team. Um, if you go to HyperionGray.com, I'll, I'll put that information up there too because stupid me forgot to put that. A C A C E R E S, uh, my last name. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's actually a really interesting question. Um, the question was, uh, could you run that on, on a botnet? Um, the answer is yes, if your botnet is sophisticated enough. Um, there's, uh, there's code out there for like really lightweight MapReduce stuff. Um, if you had a botnet that could run that, that would be perfect. And that's something that we're actually looking into where we can um, install agents on untrusted machines. Not necessarily for like, you know, actually creating a, a botnet, which would be illegal, but for stuff like, if, um, if you want users to like opt in to be able to help your job complete faster. Or if you wanted to run it remotely, like let's say you, right. you know, you're traveling a lot. Right, exactly. Yeah, stuff like that. So I think that would be really a, a really interesting direction for research. Um, and we are always looking for people to help us uh, code and stuff like that um, you know, with our open source projects. Um, so if anybody's interested, just you know, check out hyperiongray.com, shoot me an email, contact at hyperiongray.com or Acaceras at hyperiongray.com and, and let me know. So, oh yeah. Are you aware of any Hadoop service providers that are more security researcher friendly? No, <laughs> they hate us. Um, I've gotten mean things from Amazon. Um, it just cloud providers in general actually um, don't don't like us, right? But unless I mean, do y'all know any good cloud providers that are that are friendly for like you know? Doing stuff like running remote scans, things like that. Linux, for example, but they don't they're scaling like short term use. Like you know, every other building is monthly use, right? So okay, yeah. It's expensive. Right, right. Uh, well, I'd say Am in, in terms of costs, Amazon is is really a good way to go. They're the best way to go um, in terms of cost. Specifically against their terms of service. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. Yeah, unfortunately, it is specifically against their terms of service to do stuff like this. Um, even just running in against like test machines and stuff like that, I got I got a whole bunch of shit for it. So, yeah. Would you say speeding up the process would be more CPU intensive? 
Yeah, that's a good question. So the question was uh, speeding up the process, if it would be more CPU intensive, bandwidth intensive. Uh, what it turns out to be is that bandwidth is hardly ever as important as you'd think it would be. Um, we did a lot of research for that in the, um, in the crawler phase when we were writing Punk Spider. Uh, what it really comes out to be is, is bandwidth is like the least important thing out of CPU and memory. Um, uh, and most of the case when you're dealing with uh, with like HTTP, it's it's just not not as bandwidth intensive as you usually think. So, good question though. Any other questions? No. Nope. Cool. All right. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it.